Et on relâche les tensions éventuelles. Bonjour, en respirant, ça c'est vraiment quelque chose qui ne s'arrête pas. On oublie que quand on parle à des gens qui souffrent, rien que de leur parler, eh ben, ils peuvent aller mieux, subjectivement, mais même parfois, ça peut guérir des maladies. to a new edition of France in Focus. I'm Nadia Shabi, and this week we start at the Pompidou Hospital, south of Paris, as we delve into complementary and alternative medicines, or CAMs. In other words, medical treatments that are used instead of, or alongside, modern mainstream therapies. Let's go in. such practices have been identified by the World Health Organization. But here in France, just four were recognized by the Medical Academy in 2013. Osteo, Tai Chi, acupuncture and hypnotherapy. And according to a survey published by an alternative medicine website, 58% of French people have used alternative therapies and that number is on a constant rise. And while the lack of research or clinical trials regarding CAMs has led many French doctors to view them as a potential hazard, others have chosen to integrate certain practices to supplement mainstream therapy. Vous allez placer votre attention sur la respiration. For example, here at the Pompidou Hospital, nurse François Leroux is in charge of a weekly Qigong class that's open to all. Il y a la sensation de repousser quelque chose vers l'extérieur, puis de presser. Les bras vers he says this practice is about treating the patient's mental and physical internal power. The hospital offers this to cancer patients for pain relief so people get back into some form of physical activity, gain self-confidence and better handle the side effects of therapy and tone the body. And Francois's patients agree. In fact, some have been coming for years. It helps us feel more confident after therapy. That can be very tiring. It's stimulating and invigorating. It means I don't focus on my illness. No bad thoughts. Well, in some cases, the benefits may be viewed as purely subjective. But in others, like hypnotherapy, the effects can be put to the ultimate test. For instance, as an alternative to general anaesthetic. Take a look. It's a routine operation for breast cancer patients. Madeleine's about to have a tumour removed, but one thing's different. With no general anaesthetic, she's going under the knife with a local analgesic and the power of hypnotherapy. I wanted to see what it was like, most of all to see if they could manage it. Veronique's been carrying out medical hypnosis for four years now, and the practice is carefully controlled. If Madeleine doesn't respond to the hypnosis, the general anaesthetic's available at any moment. The surgical team administer the local anaesthetic, and it's time for the hypnotist to get to work. Respire. Breathe. You're going to take a deep breath, some fresh air, and then breathe out. You're becoming very relaxed, totally serene. The surgery is underway, and although Madeleine has submitted to the hypnosis, she's still aware of some physical sensations. When she's uncomfortable, they can increase the local anaesthetic. Yeah, it's important to say that. And Cecile, can you up the dose? Madeleine and Véronique continue to chat about holidays, TV programs, wine. She's fully distracted and indifferent to any pain. The operation's wrapped up quickly. After a night's stay in hospital, Madeleine's back on her feet, delighted with the ease and comfort of the procedure. In addition to hypnosis, acupuncture's made its way into hospitals too. Océane is seven months pregnant. This is the second time she's come to the clinic in Créteil to have acupuncture for her back pain. 
When we check the pulse, we get an idea of the energy circulating in the body, and we can then regulate that using the needles. After the treatment, it's as if all the bad energy has been channeled out of my back. And we're in the hospital with medical staff, it's safe and hygienic, because as soon as needles are involved, you do worry about hygiene. Virginie Fermont established the acupuncture practice within this hospital 10 years ago. The idea is to offer alternative therapies to pregnant women who have to be excluded from a lot of medical procedures. Patients get a real sense of well-being from it and it can provide great relief. After lying quietly for 15 minutes, the needles are removed and Océan's free to leave. I'm all floppy, so I'm going to go straight home, but I'm pretty sure that tonight I'm going to sleep really well. Another enthusiastic convert to the practice, Ossian also hopes to use acupuncture when she gives birth. France is famed for its national health insurance that refunds patients up to 100% of their healthcare costs. But what of CAMs? To find out more, I've come to the Cochin Hospital to meet researcher and psychiatrist Bruno Falissard, who's worked extensively on the subject. Bruno Falissard, hello. Thank you for being with us. Bonjour. Now, there are a number of words to describe these uh, non-mainstream treatments. Should we speak of alternative, complementary, integrative, natural, traditional medicine? And in fact, is the word medicine the right word? Alors. Well, you can use all those words because what it amounts to is medicine that isn't officially and systematically taught in medical school. And the word medicine is, is correct? Yes, you can say medicine if you're open-minded enough. OK, now these, the definition changes of medicine, changes as doctors test and move more of these therapies into the mainstream. Is there a financial aspect to getting these therapies recognised? Of course. In most countries today, the financial aspect is central to healthcare issues. Put simply, states can't afford to pay for all types of medication for everyone, so it's about prioritizing treatments for the most serious illnesses and those that are the most effective. That's why non-conventional medicine is often left on the wayside, because it's often used for functional problems, so it's less likely to be refunded by the state, which opens up the question of equal access to care. And there's also a question of, of testing these uh, practices. That also has a cost. Absolutely, that's a key issue. First, because they're harder to assess. Unlike pills that are always the same from one box to another, non-conventional medicine varies. In the same way that one surgeon isn't the same as another surgeon, one acupuncturist isn't the same as another. So it's harder to assess. And the other problem is that testing costs a lot of money. And is there a political will in France to assess the uh, CAMs? There's a little bit of political will here in France as regards to testing, but we're by no means the best. They make much more of an effort in the United States, for instance. The World Health Organization is also more open to the issue. But you have to bear in mind that when it comes to assessing medication, it's pharmaceutical labs that will pay for the testing. So governments aren't used to having to finance such things. But for non-conventional medicine, it's governments that will have to pay. And who decides in France which CAMs uh, can be paid for by the national health insurance? Usually it's a panel within the French National Authority for Health that looks at scientific data and decides whether or not to refund a product or care on the basis of that data. But there are exceptions in France, for example, homeopathy, that is refunded as the result of a decision by the French health minister, and this despite homeopathy being no more effective than a placebo. However, some doctors feel that homeopathy does have a positive effect on their patient's health. And that's down to political and historic reasons, so patients are allowed to use homeopathy because they want it. So it's not a waste of state funds, homeopathy? That's a real question, certainly. And maybe it's money wasted, but it's an ethical issue. On the one hand, patients want that medication. And after all, they're the ones paying the taxes that finance France's healthcare system. But on the other hand, it's not really effective medication and it means that the state won't have that money to refund treatment that does work. 
So you see it's a political and ethical question. And we hear a lot that CAMs allow for a more a personal or human patient approach. Are French doctors not sufficiently trained on that aspect of their work? You're right, but that's not limited to French doctors. It's an issue for all Western practitioners. Western medicine has become very technical. It's all about statistics, and it's also very demanding. Patients expect it to be effective, safe, scientifically proven. And as a result, doctors have less time to work on their bedside manner because they simply can't do it all. And it's true that in non-conventional medicine, practitioners are able to invest more time in their relationship with patients, and that's part of why patients go to them. And France has been rocked by a number of uh, health scandals. Uh, there was contaminated blood, faulty medication, etc. Um, and add to that a growing interest for more a uh, natural lifestyle. Do you think that the interest in CAMs is growing in France? I'd say so, but the growing interest in a more natural type of healthcare is a global trend. In Germany, for instance, there's huge interest in phytotherapy or herbal medicine. So each country has its own specific approach to non conventional medicine. But what they all have in common is a desire for less technology and technicity. But having said that, people are ambivalent because when it comes to serious illnesses, they love MRIs, PET scans, etc. And at the same time, people reject these methods because of their techie nature. And yes, we'd all love nature to be the cure. Bruno Felizar, thank you very much for having spoken to us. You're welcome. And that's where we're leaving this edition. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to France 24. Rigo.